Assalamu alaikum. I thought you said only two sentences about the bio, but uh, <laughs> next time I'll write the whole story. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with a very quick uh, brief about the bio cares. Um, I, I'm, the objective is always to at least have everybody understand uh, at a general level at least what the bio cares does, because we have a very specific role. Uh, we were established in September of 2007, as I'm sure a lot of people heard, it was a huge campaign by His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum. He invited different corporations, different in individuals to support uh, primary education in developing countries, so it was a fantastic campaign, we raised a lot of money, which also can reflect badly because then everybody expects you to give a lot of donations and big partnerships. Uh, it's a big responsibility, but it was a fantastic start, fantastic feedback and support from the community. Um, the objective was to break the cycle of poverty through providing access to quality primary education in these developing countries. And the way we do that, we focus on four things. Uh, these four things we believe are actually the things that actually give you a quality primary education uh, to implement in these countries. And these focus on infrastructure, uh, health and nutrition, water and sanitation, and hygiene and quality of education. So this gives you a quick idea of what we do. We're a specific uh, directed uh, NGO that focuses on quality primary education. Um, mostly today I want to talk about sustainability, which is a big word a lot of people are throwing around in every type of uh, organization nowadays, but it's a very important word. Um, I'll, I'll give you some examples to our programs, to our partnerships, how we go about them and how we try to su sustain our programs, how we try to be effective in these countries. Um, first of all, we start with a very, uh, very stringent um, selection process. We work with UNICEF, we work with Care International, we Save the Children, uh, and we look for these partners. They don't have, it's not only a label name, but we look for somebody who has been in the country that we're, we want to work in and who has actually worked in primary education. So if UNICEF has worked on something else in that country, we would not actually look at that. Um, the other big point is even after partnering, even after implementing, you want monitoring, evaluation, and learning to be there. Yes, they will always send us their reports. Every quarter we'll get their reports. But at the same time, at Dubai Cares, we want to also go to these countries. So every six months, we try to visit uh, the, one of these countries, make sure that the program is being uh, dealt with efficiently, that the, the results are there. And I think that's a huge learning curve. One, one way is to learn from them, what they're giving us, and at the same time, just going personally, you understand not only by sitting in your desk uh, in Dubai where, where everything is perfect, but to actually go there, see how effective it is, how many children it's reaching, is the community accepting the program, do they like it, do they endorse it? Uh, these are all indicators of sustainability. Um, I'll give you some examples uh, from my personal trips, and these were indicators that showed a small portion of uh, a good sign of sustainability, and inshallah it will carry on. Um, I remember in Bangladesh, uh, we have the PTAs, which is the Parent Teacher Associations. And uh, I was lucky enough that when I visited, they had one, it's once a month. Uh, so they invited me to sit with them, and uh, one of the parents kept, kept pointing at the roofs, and I had a translator, and he said, if you look at the, the roof, it's all, it was all broken last month before you came here, but all of us chipped in. And we, from our own money, we, we fixed it because we believe in this program and we think it's much better than the formal school. Uh, so that was a fantastic thing to hear. Um, and the end of the day, we're only going to be there. Most programs average between four to five years. So just to hear that the community is actually supporting your program, you know that once you withdraw from a country, that, okay, this thing will keep going on. It's not that we come and we give uh, fantastic aid and fantastic support, and as soon as we leave, it, go, it all stops. So that was a good sign. Um, at one, uh, also, we always talk about WASH, which is water and sanitation and hygiene. And a lot of it is focused in Bangladesh because we really try to bring that sort of awareness. And there was always a challenge where you teach the child to wash his hands, for example, in school to avoid all these waterborne diseases. And actually, I always uh, mention the statistic that every 15 seconds a child dies because of waterborne diseases. And it's a very scary statistic meaning that since we've been talking, a lot of children just died just because of that. And the issue was that these children, they'd wash their hands in school, but as soon as they go back home, they don't have that culture, so they, they relapse and they just don't wash their hands. So what we do, we, we try to make them understand why they're doing that. Once a human in general 
understand something, we're very logical creatures and we'll understand and we will just apply it. So they understand why they're washing their hands. They're not obliged to do it, but they understand it. They go back home and they actually teach their parents. So it becomes a cycle of change, a cycle of sustainability <coughs> and learning. And the last one was uh, another example is Mauritania. And a lot of the schools, what they do is um, they have these small funds and capitals where they give the school some money to open a small business, whether it's for farming, whether it's for uh, selling clothes, etc. And whatever they make uh, money from there, they just inject it back into the school. So this gives you a, a sustainable process. Um, I'll go on to uh, the program's design, flexibility. Something I learned, of course, through my journey with Dubai Cares and in general in philanthropy, you have to be very fl flexible. In these uh, developing countries, there's always new uh, challenges, new catastrophes, new wars, natural disasters, and things change in, in actually one second. And I'm sure uh, everybody who's sitting here who's part of an NGO or an orga organization, they know the challenges that comes with that. Um, one example was the Yemen program. The biggest program we have is in Yemen, and we, we work actually in Yemen with CARE International Save and UNICEF. And the one with CARE, we wanted to build 100 schools. So as soon as I joined the Dubai CARES, they told me, okay, Yemen is one of the biggest countries, and you have to take care of it. So I was thinking, okay, you're giving me the biggest country here, but you know, I have to get my good grasp around it. And just reading 100 schools, and it was in the time of the boom in Dubai, I was thinking, I can't build 100 schools in Dubai, and you want me to build 100 schools in Yemen? Uh, I think that is too challenging. And we're not only in the business of building schools. Uh, that's why I, I talked about the value chain. It's easy to just build a box, and then if there's no quality, no teacher training, no PTAs, then the quality is not there, and the, the message is not there. Um, so we, we highlighted that challenge. And we noticed that there was already delays in getting a contractor, finishing contract, making sure that the process is starting. So we sat with Care International, who were thankfully very flexible. And they said, sure, you want to change the program, we'll revise it. So we asked for three scenarios. In the end, from 100 schools, we brought it down to 53 schools, which was much more tangible. And what we did is we made it 53 schools, 53 wash facilities, which is the water and sanitation and hygiene, and three 30 ECD centers, which is early childhood development before primary school. And we, with this kind of change, we reached 70, over, over 75,000, actually 75,263 children beneficiaries compared to 36,000 previously. So we had 100 schools and 36,000 initially, but with this revision and focusing on WASH and focusing on ECD, we, we more, nearly doubled the whole, uh, the whole number. Um, and recently also we had the Mali program, which uh, two of our guys just traveled today. They're going to be there for two weeks. Uh, it's about promotion of wash in schools. And the, the nice thing about this is that the Cares was able to gather UNICEF, Save the Children, Oxfam Care, and Water Aid all together partnering rather than each in their own direction. And when we partnered this way, we reached 225,000 beneficiaries and over 700 schools in Mali. So I think it's, it was a fantastic gesture, a fantastic program to start with, that showed that all these organizations, all of us in the end have one common goal. And, uh, and just by partnering, rather than everybody sticks to their own mandate and thinking, no, this is the way we do things, and we don't want to join forces, this proved everything that anybody thought not possible, possible. So we were very happy with that, and Hamdan is starting, and the guys are going there for two weeks, and we really look forward to hearing from them. Uh, lastly, and I think, uh, am I good on time? It is lastly. Good. It is lastly. Um, the last, and I think one of the most important things is that we have the campaigns department and the awareness and the education. Uh, it's one thing we're talking about our mandate and we have to go to all these developing countries, etc. But uh, Dubai Cares will not exist without the community. That is a fact. It's not just something that I, do, I like to say. If we want to be sustainable as Dubai Cares, then the, the, the people of the UAE have to believe in it. Uh, they have to keep it sustainable, and of course, the more support we get, the more we can actually do something. Um, so what we always try to focus on is bringing ed education to the community. Even after the downturn, people are even more picky with their funds. They want to understand exactly what they're fund supporting, what they're funding, and it's very important for us to be transparent. And I'm sure, um, Peter, you have a lot to talk about. Uh, I remember hearing you talk about uh, um, transparency and accountability and all, and this thing is actually, I think, very new to the Arab world and it's something that's being picked up and we're really instilling it in our way of working in these organizations. Um, 
very small examples that we had a school feeding campaign trying to make people understand why school feeding is connected to, to education. A lot of people don't understand what, what does water have to do with education or what does food have to do with education. So this is very important for us to bring to the table for people to be educated. We had the walk for education. Uh, I was talking to somebody who was part of it. I think the lady is there. Uh, it's, it's fantastic just to show that you know these kids have to walk uh, three kilometers on average every day to go to school and come back. Uh, and tomorrow we actually have a stand-up comedy, which is very indirect, but at least we can bring out a very simple message about Dubai Cares in an entertainment way, reaching a certain sector of the community, the college students, the high school students, at least they get to learn at least maybe one sentence about Dubai Cares. Um, I think yeah, that covers my points. Uh, thank you.